daring fools, we must go on. But your majesty, the sleigh is wrecked. And look, your magic is melting with the snow. Then we must walk. We can't overtake them walking. Not with the start they've got. Are you my counselor or my slave? Do as you're told. Tie his hand. And give me that whip. Move! It's going all over! Look! Look, don't you see? You must see! This is no thaw. This must be spring. What are you going to be do? Your winter's been destroyed. Destroyed, I tell you. This is all Aslan's doing. Yes, Aslan the great lion. He has defeated you. If either of you mention that name again, he will be instantly killed. <laughs> is a miserable fool. He is not aware of the great power of Imperial Majesty Yardus, Queen of Narnia, Chatelaine of Kir Parvel, Emperor... Enough, you prating puppet! Get on! At once, Your Majesty. You heard, creature! They're going! Stop! 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 Faster! Faster! <coughs> Edmund had been forced to walk as fast as he could with his hands tied behind. He kept slipping in the slush and mud and wet grass. And every time he slipped, a nasty little dwarf gave him a kick or an elbow in the back with a curse. The witch was walking behind, wagging her whip and shouting, Faster! 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 As they went along, so the patches of green got larger and the patches of snow got smaller and smaller. More and more of the trees shed their robes of snow, and soon, wherever they looked, instead of white shapes, they could see the dark green of fir trees, or the black, twisted branches of bare oaks and beeches and elms. The mist turned white to gold, and presently cleared away altogether. Shafts of delicious sunlight struck down onto the forest floor, and overhead they could see blue skies between the treetops. The noise of water grew louder, and Edmund simply had to stop to take in nature's beauty. It's beautiful. So beautiful. My own business. Why have we stopped? It's him, Your Majesty. Everything is coming alive. It will soon be ice and stone again. Aslan has meddled for the last time. One more word from you. Just one. And a stone son of Adam will decorate my weeping forest. <laughs> but the witch's threats couldn't stop Edmund from looking and listening. There came a sound to him more delicious than the sound of the brooks. Close beside the path they were following, a bird began to sing. It was answered by the chuckle from another bird from further off. And then, as if this were a signal, there came a chattering and chirruping from every direction. The whole wood was filled with bird music. Faster, fool! Faster! While Edmund was being driven along on a rope lead like a dog, by the nasty little dwarf and the evil witch, the children and the beavers were slowly making their way through the changing forest in what seemed to be a delicious dream. Look, the kingfisher. And just listen to that thrush. You, getting much warmer. Can't be needing these again. You won't need those coats anymore, my dear. I think you're right, Mrs. Beaver. Well, look, we can hang them on that tree over there. Mm, good idea. We can pick them up on the way back. 
You are beginning to boil in that old coat. Me too. Which is much better now. There, that's much better. Now we can get on much more quickly. I just can't understand it. I mean, one minute we're freezing, the middle of us is an endless winter, and well, two hours later it's spring. It's so beautiful. January to May in no time. Wonderful. I bet she's hopping. Oh, I bet she's hopping mad. Oh, what if she's turned as green as the trees, or better still, melted? Oh. <laughs> better get on. Enjoy it as we go along. Hurry now, let's get going. No, no, no. Her, she can't catch us any longer. Come on, sit down, everybody. Sit down. What are you saying, Mrs. Beaver? Well, how can she? A magic sleigh. Oh, ooh, that won't do her any good. I bet she's stuck out in the middle of the forest. Ha <laughs> ha! With wet feet. What do you mean, my dear? With wet feet? Well, don't you understand, Mr. Beaver? With no snow. With no sleigh. With no magic sleigh. He's got. To war. Just like us. We're a long way in front. Oh, 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 in fact, we're almost there. When we get to the top of that hill, through the forest, you'll be able to see the stone table. Oh, you see, my dear, there's no need to hurry, but nevertheless, it would be nice if we could get on as soon as possible, wouldn't That's it? True. Can't wait. Aslan will be there. Oh, he'll be there, never fear. All ready? Ready. Yeah, me too. Right. Then off we go. Ha, ha, ha. He, 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 the wicked wife, which she won't touch me. The sleigh is useless, what the fuss. The wicked wife, which she won't touch us. Ha, 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 he, he, he. The wicked wife, which she won't touch me. The sleigh is useless, what the fuss. The wicked wife, which she won't touch us. Ha, 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 he, he, he. The wicked wife, which she won't touch me. The sleigh is useless, what the fuss. Mr. Beaver led them all up the last hill. And as they looked down, there in the clearing stood the stone table. It was a great, grey, grim slab of stone, supported by four huge pillars. It looked very old, and it was marked all over with lines and figures that might have been the letters of some strange language. The children could have stayed looking at it for hours, but Mr. Beaver was anxious for them to meet the great lion, and so he busied them down the other side of the hill and into Aslan's encampment. In front of them was Aslan's pavilion, guarded by two minotaurs and other creatures of Aslan's following. When they came to the entrance, they were all uncertain and a little frightened of the prospect of at last beating the son of the great emperor beyond the sea. Oh, no, no, you first. No, sons of Adam before animals. Ladies first? No, you're the eldest. Lucy, you brought us here. Mr. Beaver did. It's you he wants to see. <laughs> We have come, Aslan. Welcome, Peter, son of Adam. Welcome, Susan and Lucy, daughters of Eve. Welcome, he beaver and she beaver. But where is the fourth? He has betrayed us, Aslan, and gone and joined the White Witch. That was partly my fault. I was angry with him, and I think that helped him to do it. I see. Please, please, Aslan, can anything be done to save Edmund? All shall be done but it may be harder than you think. Take the daughters of Eve and the beavers and let them rest. Come, son of Adam, I wish to talk with you and show you something. Then Peter, the sword still in his hand, walked with the great lion out of the encampment onto a rise. Aslan placed his paw on Peter's shoulder and talked gently to the boy. Lucy and Susan felt very happy and secure. But rather foolishly, instead of resting, they wandered away from the safety of the encampment to pick bluebells and daffodils. Meanwhile, 
Aslan, not being aware of the danger that stalked the two daughters of Eve, drew Peter's attention to the beautiful landscape of Narnia. There is the great castle of Care Paravel. Care Paravel of the Four Thrones, on one of which you must sit as king. I show it to you because you are the firstborn and will be high king over all the rest. What was that? It is your sister's horn. Well, then, then she must be in danger. Danger is all around us, son of Adam. But then I must go. Yes, go! Let the prince win his spurs. <laughs> shall be the first and then the others one by one so another my task becomes too easy and unicorns! Another wolf hiding in the bushes. He will report to his mistress. After him, all of you! Now is our chance to find the witch and rescue the fourth son of Adam. You have forgotten to clean your sword. Hand it to me. And kneel, son of Adam. Rise up, Sir Peter Wolfsbane. That is the name by which you shall be known forevermore in this land of Narnia. And so it was. Peter had received the greatest honor that Aslan could bestow. Lucy and Susan were very proud of him. They were also very worried about Edmund and what might happen to him. Poor Edmund had been made to walk further than he'd ever thought anybody could walk. At last, the witch called a halt. He just fell down to the wet ground and lay there exhausted. Not even caring what was going to happen next, provided they would let him lie still. He must have reached the stone table by now. More Grim will bring us news. It cannot be good news. Remember, slave, there are four thrones at Care Parabel. Three does not fulfill the prophecy. But with us, with him here, he may not stay long. Then we can deal with the other three and keep this one for bargaining with. <laughs> Fool! They will try to rescue him. Then we must do what we have to do at once. <laughs> I would like to have sacrificed them on the stone table. That is the proper place. That is where it has always been done before. We have no time. True. Then we must begin. I have seen them. They are all at the stone table. They have killed Morgrim. What? I was hidden. I saw it all. One of the sons of Adam killed him with a golden sword. You must run and hide. We must fly, fly. No. There will be no flying and no hiding. Go quickly. Summon all our people to meet me here. Call out the giants and the werewolves and the spirit of those trees that are on our side. Call out the ghouls and the bogles and the ogres and the cruels and the hags and the spectres and the people of the toadstools. We will fight! I still have my wand. I will turn their ranks to stone as they advance. Go quickly and tell them all to waste no time. 
I have a little thing to finish here while you are gone. But where, if we have no cable? Where? I think against that tree. <laughs> Prepare the victim. <laughs> table is reached. Journey's end. Sons and daughters of Adam meet Aslan, a friend. The grey wolf assassin breaks cover and strikes, but Peter destroys him and is dubbed a true knight. Poor Edmund's a dog, dragged on a rope lead, then bound to a tree trunk. His future decreed.